Namaste. Welcome to today's session of our overview webinar series. I'm Dimple, the Director of Academic Programs at Indica. At Indica, we strive to create and curate online courses that delve into various aspects of Indian knowledge systems. Our mission is to share the transformative power of timeless indigenous wisdom with lifelong learners. I encourage you to visit indica.courses through to browse through our complete catalog and uh, I would highly suggest that you do enroll, gift, or even recommend our courses to people who you believe would benefit from the same. This specific overview webinar series has become a vital part of Indica courses. Uh, it is a platform uh, for prospective learners to get a detailed understanding of any upcoming Indica course so that uh, learners can make an informed enrollment decision. Over the past few years, we have hosted numerous such sessions and all of uh, those are available for viewing on Indic Academy's YouTube channel. Today's specific uh, webinar is focused on our upcoming Indica course, Rukshayur Veda. The comprehensive online course uh, aims to bridge the ancient science of Ayurveda with contemporary agricultural practices. It offers practical insights into cultivating crops naturally, soil fertility enhancement, managing pests through time-tested Ayurvedic techniques. Uh, designed for aspiring natural farmers, this course is also open to anyone who's interested in natural farming, from beginners to experienced growers or just curious learners. Uh, the course begins on the 16th of August uh, with live sessions on every Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. IST. Our distinguished faculty, Sri Ravi Singh Chaudhary, will take you through the course details in a bit. Uh, but before I hand it over to him, I would like to introduce him to you all. Sri Ravi Singh Chaudhary is the author of four books, Rishi Intelligence, Chanakya's Intelligence, Krishi Samhita and Gau Samhita. His fifth book, Prakshayur Veda Samhita, will be released this year. Raviji holds a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering and has six years of industry experience with HEC and Vedanta. He is the director of Dhanvantri Natural Foundation, a consultancy firm specializing in Briksha Ayurveda, Vedic cow rearing and agroforestry. Raviji is also a member of the Subcommittee on Heritage of Agriculture, looking into the creation of the BSc Agriculture course on natural farming. He has also published a paper on decolonization of the mind. I now invite Raviji to give us an overview of this upcoming Indica course. Raviji, all yours. Namaste everyone and thank you so much uh, Dimple ma'am for such a nice introduction. I am sharing my slide. Yeah. And thank you uh, coming on weekend. Yeah. So uh, today's session will be on uh, introduction to Vriksha Ayurveda. What is this course about and what is this word actually mean? Okay, Vriksha Ayurveda because uh, when you search it on internet, you will get uh, varieties of definition, okay? Because Ayurveda is always associated with uh, human health care, okay? So what is this special about uh, Vriksha Ayurveda? So imagine a situation uh, or the time uh, where there were no IC engines, diesel or petrol, and you have to deal with these sectors, okay? The food sector, textile, medicine, construction material, cosmetics, aromatics, packing material, fodder, liquor, and tobacco. So India is always being called as a like uh, agrarian, an agrarian society, okay? Now, agriculture doesn't mean just food production, okay? The cotton is coming from agriculture. That means the textile industry, the herbs, the natural herbs, the trees, the medicines, the uh, what we call herbal healthcare system, that is also coming from the practice of agriculture and agroforestry. Construction material. The temples of India, you will find that the bamboo is one of the most used material throughout the ancient structures. So kind of a construction material, it is also coming from agriculture. Cosmetics and aromatics. Now, this is the time when people seek for uh, natural healthcare or natural cosmetics, organic products and all. But in ancient time, it is obvious that 
beyond synthetic, beyond chemicals, we would have the aromatics and cosmetics coming from flowers, coming from herbs. That is also a part of agrarian system. Packing material, the jute, the jute bags, that is also part of kind of a cultivation practice. It is not coming from an industry. Also the fodder, fodder for horse, elephant and oxen, kind of a fuel for the economy, your logistical system, your transport system. The fuel for that system is the fodder and it is also coming from agriculture and the liquor and tobacco that is also grown naturally. So agrarian society doesn't just mean food system. Okay. So these all are kind of a kind of an industry and that demands a, a kind of a supply chain for their inputs. So agriculture can't be kind of a primitive thing. It should be uh, structured in manner. And that is a kind of a curiosity for me. Like for last 300 years, we, we boast about industrial revolution. And for last 10,000 years, last 15,000 years, or maybe beyond that, uh, we are an agrarian society. And for human evolution, 10,000 years is not, it is cannot be a kind of a static uh, period that there is no growth on thinking about agriculture, thinking about school of thought of agriculture. And uh, I, people uh, like me found the text on agriculture that is also introducing, that is also using Ayurveda for their practices. So what is Vriksha Ayurveda? Now, the first word is there, Veda. Okay. Now, whenever the word Veda comes, uh, people think like it is a kind of a religious text. Okay. Something written in Sanskrit, something very much ancient, then it should have, uh, it would have something ritualistic practices and not something uh, tangible, beneficial, scientific knowledge system. Okay. So there is a concept of nirukta in Sanskrit. Niruk defines that for a one word, there are many meanings as for the context. Okay. So one of the word of the Veda, and that is originating from the root word vid, which means knowledge, beneficial knowledge. Okay. So the word Veda in Vriksha Ayurveda is the kind of a knowledge system. Okay. And the Vriksha Nam Ayurveda, Iti Ayurveda. Iti Vriksha Ayurveda. Vriksha Ayurveda is the Ayurved for trees. Now, when, when you search in internet, uh, the term means like when we are growing medicinal plants for Ayurveda, that is called Vriksha Ayurveda. And you can pretty much guess that it is not just about uh, developing something for Ayurveda, but it is the plant life sciences for the plant. We are taking care of plants health, plants productivity. Okay, so it is kind of a amalgamation of agriculture, botany, agrometeorology, soil sciences, ecology, and the prerequisite that is required, obviously, the basic knowledge of Dravya Guna uh, that is coming from Ayurveda and the Jyoti Shastra that is the Ganitiya Jyoti, the, the uh, what we call today the biodynamic agriculture. Agriculture uh, by aligning uh, with the lunar cycle, with the solar cycle, with the constellations, with the stars, is very much uh, well known among uh, the agriculturists all around the world that the biodynamic agriculture and the root of that knowledge system is coming from Jyotish Shastra. Okay. So Vriksha Ayurveda is... Ayurveda for plants and trees. So that means we are finding faults in terms of three dosha, vata, pitta, and kapha. And I will I will define those terms in, in our course, that what is the vata, what is the pitta, and what is the kapha, because I am assuming that uh, this course will be for also the curious people who at least don't have uh, a kind of a background in agriculture or even in Ayurveda. And why to even bother for Vriksha Ayurveda? Okay, like if a, like this text is thousand year old, at least thousand year old. Uh, 
and people will say thousand year old knowledge system that means it would be primitive it would be kind of uh, a combination of shloka combination of things that will be kind of a pseudoscience in nature so why even uh, we should invest our time okay just for the intellectual uh, discourse or uh, intellectual uh, pleasure no we want to solve a problem we want to solve a problem for our age okay and we have observed the system that is coming from the mindset of industrial economy the sector or that domain that is incompatible with that mindset is the nature okay nature doesn't work the way we think or the way we were taught to think okay so this is the shloka uh, that is that is hinting about how to recover a plant how to recover a tree that is struck by the lightning okay so it is not just about recovering from pest attack or some kind of a disease but the audacity of this the the author or the ved he is even finding solution how to rejuvenate a tree even after getting a thunder a strike to that plant so uh, we all can say that this is not just a primitive text it is it is kind of uh, uh going beyond what even today what we are solving for the uh, problems of the plants okay and you can say the last slide a kind of a clickbait for a youtube video or a clickbait to attract uh, 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 people to learn about riksha ayurveda but the actually uh, we will learn the more fundamental thing uh, more holistic approach uh, to solve the problems of the plant and these are kind of a shlok that will come in our session like out of season fruiting prolonged fruiting and flowering converting a tree into a creeper changing the aroma seedless fruit dwarfing a plant recovering sweetness of the fruits drip irrigation okay now you can say like many things are not just uh the age in the age of we, we say israel discovered the drip irrigation technology and and many more things but the text has the concept has the ability to describe these plant wonders and the last one is the hell storm impact recovery okay so these are the part of uh text and why why ayurveda or why riksha ayurveda even able to do it because indic sciences are always based on panch mahabhuta vat pit and kapha and that is not specific for human body or the plant body but about the cosmos okay so it is also about managing your microclimate managing your surrounding and that's how you you reduce the problems of your plant and today we call that system agro ecology management okay and these are few examples uh, what is the group of vata what is the group of problem that can be characterized into pitta and what is kapha so when you say when you see the leaf yellowing or decay of flowers and fruit you can say that that is a problem of the pitta and the best thing about vriksha ayurveda is like if you know pitta for plant and if you already know the pitta defect for human body that is a well elaborated subject ayurveda for human health you know about vat pitta and kapha then you can superimpose those solutions to plants to solve those problems that is the beauty of this subject and that's how it is not pseudoscience if if it is science if it has some principles and if the plants uh, are also following uh, plant life sciences also following those principles then it will solve those problems it doesn't matter if we are not able to explain it able to dissect it okay but we can superimpose the knowledge of human healthcare to the plant healthcare if we can characterize the same kind of problem 
for plants similar to humans okay, and these are kind of a solution and one of the solution like i i would like to mention about the kafir remedy okay so kafir is kind of a uh, when people go into rain and uh, they got in wet and and uh, they got cough and cold so what is the kind of solution like uh and for the plants if there is a kind of a over irrigation over irrigation okay so it is kind of a similar situation like okay and for the kafa problem for the plant we have to do what is the remove the soil nearby the roots put the fresh dry soil and or or do the irrigation mixed with ash and the sesame we will go into detail all these methodologies and and tricks and all uh, it is just the glimpse that the kind of uh, uh, the solution the kind of uh, chapters we will go on okay again there is a problem in digestion and we are uh, recommended or we are prescribed to get some amount of ghee uh, some amount of trifala okay similar uh, to the uh, similar situation when it come to the plant we can also use uh, the trifala and ghee for the cure now back of the mind uh, the point will come like it it would not be a financially feasible thing to to apply human health care human health care for the plant health care so we will filter out what is financially feasible what we can do that is not heavy on our pocket okay but for the scientific pursuit for the academic pursuit we should know uh, the all categories of the problem and the solution similar to human healthcare system okay now uh, even before we go into the subject we have to learn about uh, the bharatiya drishti and the world view that governs today's science okay now many people boast about like we should work for the humanity now this this sentence is coming from descartes principle that tells that nature has to bend uh, for fulfilling the needs and desire of human okay so even humanity is kind of a you know, egoistic thing that you we want to conquer the nature and that philosophy that perspective is allowing us to exploit nature more and more and this is the shloka coming from riksha vedan also one of the puran matsya puran that dash kupa sama vapi dash vapi samo hrida dash hrida sama putra dash putra samo druma okay now druma is the plant that is flowering and fruiting both there are many plants that are directly fruiting like palm tree that is called vanaspati and the plant like pomegranate that is doing flowering and fruiting that is called druma okay so it it translates into 10 wells equal to one pond 10 pond equal to one lake 10 lake equal to one sun and 10 sun equal to one tree so even before this activism of environment uh, the perspective is like trees are much more useful beneficial and on priority order it is beyond human also okay so humanity is not the pivotal point of view of bhartiya drishti okay the second principle that would come uh, that is the basis of microbiology of today like the shloka means like if we care the life beneath the soil it will take care of the life above the soil okay so today's agriculture is more of biology rather than chemistry so last 50 60 years uh, we are using the principles of chemistry 
that tells us about macro micronutrients like NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, borone, silica, and many more such things. So that is based on chemistry. But today's agriculture or today's like the practice of permaculture or agroforestry or agroecology or Rishi Krishi or biodynamic agriculture or homa farming or organic farming or natural farming or Bharatiya Prakritik Krishi Paddhati or Vriksha Ayurveda practice, every school of thought does take care of micro life forms beneath the soil. Okay. And this is again, this is again kind of coming from a Bharatiya Drishti that life is not a linear progression, but cyclical in nature. So people like uh, many people sarcastically uh, told me uh, that, okay, you are going primitive. You are again, you will again use uh, the cow dung and all that is very much ancient practice and all, and it would not be a kind of a precision agriculture. And you will not get that much of a productivity coming from that practice, that kind of a framework. Okay. Now the image is here is of come, uh, coming from the movie Harry Potter and the Phoenix. And uh, many got like, uh, aha moment when when they saw that when phoenix died uh, from that ash new phoenix is being born okay now this is actually happening uh, in nature okay like in a spring autumn I there is a fall of leaves every year every year there is a kind of a situation where tree sheds their leaves and those leaves become kind of a compost, kind of a humus that nurtures the tree and tree rejuvenates. Okay, so there is a destruction and that destruction is giving hint about the rejuvenation. So this is, the nature is kind of a cyclical in behavior that it, it, it is being created, then it is being sustained and then is being destroyed. Okay, so destruction is helping us or the excreta or the the uh, what we call like even before the concept of recycling and i must tell you recycling uh, was popularized not just because it as a concept but it it had some economic values then recycle recycling phenomena got popularized okay but here you can see the 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 cow urine or the cow dung these things are kind of a waste for a common layman this means how it can be useful okay but that point of view that this nature is cyclical in nature this is the excreta this is the waste but that will help to bring fertility into the soil and that will rejuvenate the soil and new life form will come from the soil okay so yeah. we have to basically take care of the soil even before the crop okay Agriculture, today's modern agriculture is all about crops, roots, plants, foliage growth, production, productivity, color and all. And the problem is not just food security. Whenever this the, the, the concept of natural farming or organic farming comes, uh, people quote the devastation of Sri Lankan economy due to organic farming. Now I must tell you, banning chemical is not organic farming. You have to learn it. You have to execute it. You have to think it. You have to live with it. And then you have to have a good market for it. And then it will give you the money. It's not just abrupt banning or putting some laws and regulation that it will help you. Okay. Like for Sikkim, in 2003, the concept of organic farming was merged with tourism and then in 2016 it got the uh, certificate of organic state so 13 years 13 years and also the support of the tourism industry and the image building like many people would come to your state if your state is organic so it, it takes a longer time because it, it 
if it took a, a kind of a 50, 60 years to destroy your soil, it will take time to rejuvenate. Okay. So conceptually, it has no fault, but it, it, it should be learned not just from the framework of chemical farming. Like people would say, what is the alternative of urea in organic farming or natural farming? What is the alternative of DAP? What is the alternative of this uh, calcium chloride and all? So that framework is kind of an allopathic framework. Okay. We have to learn the Vriksha Ayurvedic framework, or I must say the Ayurvedic framework to learn it. And the problem is not food security. Problem is also about nutrient in the food. And problem is also about the water scarcity. Okay. If there is no water, no school of thought, no kind of organic farming practice can, can help you. Okay. So production per hectare, is irrelevant in the age of when there is so much of destruction and there is kind of a malnutrition practice, uh, malnutrition phenomena among the people. Okay, so nutrient per acre, health per acre, and also the, then kind of a economy, the profit per acre. Okay, the, the concept of revenue, the concept of the top line, the concept of how much tonnage you are getting from uh, a particular farm you should have a kind of a you you are not a kind of a big corporate that is uh, that can bear the the uh, concept of loss making for 10 years or 20 years if you are loss making for just for 2 years you will left agriculture you will left natural farming so the profit the nutrient per acre the concept of health per acre would be your priority while while approaching towards natural farming and the organic farming these are the ancient text okay uh, maybe between the course or after the course if you want to deep dive into the uh, depth of riksha ayurveda uh, you can refer to these texts okay and also my fifth book will come maybe in in a month or two that that will include all these shlokas from this books also okay and riksha ayurveda i must say riksha ayurveda uh, is recovered the text Viksha Ayurveda. The concept of Viksha Ayurveda is all, uh, all over in Kashyap Krishi, Shukti Krishi, Parasar, Vishwavallav, Upavan, Vinod. Okay. But the actual text uh, that covers that the particular subject, not just few concepts, but kind of a more than uh, 300 shlokas that would cover plantation, that would cover pest management, that would cover the uh, harvesting uh, methodologies and all. It, it, it got recovered from Bodleian Library of UK, like in 1994, I must say, uh, by the great Vyal Nene. He brought that text in India and that translated into Sanskrit, Hindi, and, and English. Uh, and then, so last more than 20 years, this text is available with us. It is just, I... I was applying these techniques with the farmers. So I am not coming from acad academia. I am coming from corporate. I am coming from uh, uh, the field of entrepreneurship that applied uh, the techniques of Riksha Ayurveda after failing for like one and a half year, two years by applying all those uh, techniques uh, mentioned uh, by many uh, thinkers like okay one straw revolution book is there and and uh, agricultural testament is there and mm, uh, many people all around the world tried and practiced the concept of natural farming and organic farming and later i found that similar to ayurveda like we we in ayurveda the nadi parikshan is there the solution or the medicine is always customized it is based on context and in india there are more than you can say 20 agroclimatic zone. So one kind of a solution you cannot apply somewhere else. Okay, it's, so one fits for all uh, yeah. SOPs. These are coming from industrial thinking patterns. Okay, we have to go for what is required for your soil, what is required for your area, and then we have to learn the methodology 
and that mythology that science is coming from understanding the ayurveda so after completing this course you will able to apply ayurvedic principle to agricultural practices create and use natural fertilizers and soil conditioners identify manage pests using organic methods and i will also give few videos on how to prepare in your farm in your uh, farmhouse promote sustainable and eco friendly farming techniques advocate for uh, or implement practices that support environmental conservation okay so i think through vriksha ayurveda you will also learn the the bhartiya drishti okay as as a abstract or as a concept whenever we tell about this is the indic perspective this is the indian knowledge system uh, it is hard to grasp or it is hard to uh, like uh, uh, contemplate like but with the vriksha ayurveda we will also able to uh, understand how ayurveda works and why it worked for many centuries and why uh, it is called as pseudo science by many people and even many renowned scientists okay so we will also delve into uh, how science works and how indic science or indic uh, way of thinking uh, developed these these knowledge systems okay and kind of a syllabus is uh, okay we can uh, name these chapters but uh, in between we will we will Uh, understand or we will try to execute uh, the methodologies or learnings of vriksha ayurveda and uh, these are basically the chapter the second chapter is the vaisheshik darshan the bhartiya physics for the time being i can uh, means uh, use a word to to like uh, to to give you the idea what is vaisheshik darshan because during exploring Uh, the vriksha ayurveda i had a problem like you have an, an engineering subject so you have to understand the applied science and even before that you have to understand the science and even before that you have to understand the logic system okay so logic system so western science is coming from aristotelian logic then mathematics then physics then applied science then engineering okay and then finally it came into technology so science engineering and technology okay so to rejuvenate this this subject because it it was a lost subject okay so whenever i was going for ayurveda text like charak samhita the ancient text on ayurveda i was not able to apply those principles directly for the plants okay so the thought came that what is more fundamental than ayurveda if if we can learn the fundamental behind ayurveda we can apply those fundamentals for vriksha ayurveda and that fundamental science is vaisheshik darshan okay the third one is the rishi bhrigu and bharadwaja samvada it is coming from mahabharat and the gist the summary of those uh, conversations are or is the plants are conscious being they are conscious so consciousness is also there okay so uh, we will also learn about what are those interesting conversations between rishi bhrigu and bharadwaja uh, fourth one is the vata pitta kapha the metaphysics of ayurveda what is vata what is pitta what is kapha the three dosh framework the ternary framework so that Uh, whenever we use these words because these three words will be used more than any other set of words okay so we have to learn it we have to define it properly uh, and we have to internalize it at least then we can apply it and we can learn it like what is the solution for termite attack and what is the solution for over irrigation and all the fifth one is the kunap jala and i think the interest of many researchers many um, scientists whenever when they come to vriksha ayurveda or they search uh, in google the first word that came is kunap jala kunap means foul smell it is a kind of a fermented solution 
So those who are already doing farming, they all know about Jivamrit, Amritjal, Sasagavya, Panchagavya, and many more solution that always includes cow dung, cow urine, jaggery, and all. So the principle that it is not out of thin air that farmers were applying these solutions. The basis of those fermented solution is in Vriksha Vedan that is called Kunapajala. Okay. And Kunapajala is kind of a biofertilizer, bio-enhancer, and sometimes even also a kind of a uh, helping plants to, to give it a immunity against the pest. Again, the Tridosh remedy, remedy, whenever there is a dosh like Vat, Pitta, Kapha, and what, what are those solutions? Okay, like uh, simply, simply treating the seeds, simply uh, doing the proper, uh, the preventive care, we can avoid many of the issues. Again, the next one is the Agnihotra. Many would be skeptical, but I would I would present research paper uh, presented by kind of from India, outside India, and why it works. Okay, why it works? The Homa farming and the Rishi Krishi part is coming from here, Vedic agriculture, all those terminologies that would come uh, from the Agni Hutra. Soil health and nutrient management, and obviously, uh, Sometimes I would mention the, the chemical farming framework just to, just to understand the Vriksha with the perspective because the comparative analogy or comparative analysis helps us to grasp more. Okay. Natural fertility improvement, setting up of natural farm. Actually, I have told you all like I am not coming from just an academic background. I am not a professor in a university, but actually doing farming with farmers. And for finding solution, uh, I did root cause analysis. Like Because I was coming from corporate and they uh, taught us the fishbone diagram, why why analysis. And so I was just finding the solution why, why the particular methodology failed. And it worked for some, somewhere. Uh, okay. So... Uh, what are the do's and don'ts? You can say, what are the mistakes that, that we can avoid? Uh, and we, we, we can save lots of money even before, because we can lured by YouTube videos, like you can earn 10 lakhs per acre, ton, uh, one crore per hectare and all. But as I said, like these are clickbait. The money earned is directly proportional to your effort, at least in agriculture. There is no leverage. If you understand nature well, then you would have lesser number of problems. Okay, but there are kind of a variable. We say in agriculture, there are 65 variables. Okay, so 65 variables, kind of uh, the depth of the seed you sow, the distance between the plants, the irrigation, the methodology of, uh, the timing of your sowing, the rain, the irrigation methodology, the harvesting time, the pruning time. So there are kind of a group of 65 variables that is responsible for your success if you can able to manage. And we all know nature, we cannot manage everything. Uh, okay, we cannot control. That's why we have a concept of polyhouse and greenhouse. Like we want to control uh, the factors so that we would be more economically uh, viable for our project. And obviously the last part is the maintenance and sustainability. So from this course, you will learn Ayurvedic perspective, Riksha Ayurvedic perspective, and at the end actually able to set up a farm and able to uh, even, uh, you, can, uh, you can help your friends that are actually struggling in their farm and why they are not able to uh, control the pest attack and able to grow the uh, crops well and good. And the last point of view that I want to share is like uh, what I have seen, uh, the binary framework issue. Like you can, uh, you must have gone through like uh, 
the concept of the two extremes like they did we did the chemical farming chemical agriculture we destroyed the uh, uh, the microbiology of the soil and today people would suggest just go for do nothing farming okay do not just do means just uh, uh, means you don't have even to cultivate uh, you don't even to uh, you have to give the manures even there so but but our perspective is like if you uh, the indian farmer the small uh, farmers that has the small land holdings he will not appreciate the concept of do nothing farming you must have the productivity you must have the feasibility you you have you must have the economic viability okay then they will appreciate your concept uh, it cannot be just like two other extreme like we have destroyed the nature now we will go into forest we will go off grid we will do nothing and so there is madhyam marg there is madhyam marg uh, where we can minimize our wrong deeds and even then we can get uh, productivity out of it quality fruits out of it okay like the proper taste and aroma we can get okay out of vriksh uh, uh, ayurveda techniques okay so this is not kind of a intellectual uh, discourse uh, but actually a journey of a setting a natural farm that is technically not natural like when we are involving some method it is always not it is it cannot be called natural okay so it is a kind of a misnomer but our farm will be kind of a herbal healthcare system or herbal system okay so i think uh, this is all from my side and we can means you you must have questions you can ask thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, ravi ji this was highly highly insightful and we had questions going uh, even during the course of your uh, session uh, we will uh, take some of the questions which i could not answer some of them were very operational so i handle those for you but there are certain questions um, that are there for us but before we delve in we just head into the q and a i just wanted to clarify that this is as i said an overview webinar only for the course which is spread over many weeks uh, so uh, some of you have already enrolled for the course and are here just to get a flavor of what is there to uh, in the ensuing sessions and for those of you who found what was discussed today interesting uh please click on the link that i've sent for enrollment and you can then uh, get into each of the themes that has been uh, described uh, or rather listed by ravi ji in the syllabus or the course overview portion so uh, he told us what the outcomes of the course is that is what are we targeting at the end of the complete course so i'm uh, elaborating on this uh, because i saw a question by an anonymous participant they were wondering if everything will be covered today no this is a course spread over a period of time today's session is simply a free webinar so that you get a flavor of what is to uh, you know be offered during the sessions live sessions that will be conducted so now let's go to the q and a all uh, there is and uh, uh, there is will the course cover organic manure preparation organic pesticide preparation also uh, is a is a question by an anonymous attendee ravi ji yeah obviously because then if we if i am not explaining those then it would be kind of a class of a philosophy yeah sure and uh, i just wanted to remark that it is so wonderful to see um, someone who's actually made contemporary use of an ancient knowledge system and uh, somewhere uh, while you were describing uh, things and it was it just struck me that you know we tend to associate ancient with primitive but you've practically proven how it is not so so even i am curious about your particular course now so i hope this answers your uh, query uh, dear anonymous attendee uh, i think they have uh, okay so uh, there is a comment by uh, jia arora ji um, uh, if if you read it probably you might want to take it yeah so so it took 13 years uh, and how they survived they got survived because 
policy supported it because it is not just about agriculture but also about tourism okay so people uh, don't know like how green revolution got pushed in india because behavior change is uh, very hard okay so people were doing organic farming till 70s okay natural farming and scientists came with the concept of chemical farming but farmers were not willing to apply chemicals on their farms they they thought it would be a kind of a heat and trial and they will lose their uh, money while trying ex experiments okay so scientists what they did scientists literally went for uh, for the farm and they spread urea by themselves and next morning farmers saw okay we are getting results so so we can take it we can take it and that urea got subsidized for 90% kind of if a cost of a urea is 100 rupee it is still kind of a 90% subsidized so so chemical farming is always got subsidy that's why and that's how it survived so for the livelihood and for the uh, uh, application of organic farming again farmers need support farmers need policy support they they cannot do their own means uh, it, it would be tough for small farmers at least uh, to wait for 5 years 10 years 13 years okay so it's a kind of a support they need uh, to bring uh, to uh, revert back to natural farming practices then we have another question by uh, ankuri agarwal ji so this is a very interesting observation so she is suggesting that uh, you could cover gardening as well uh, in any session for those who live in uh, apartments or fl flats and have to grow things in planters so any okay okay yeah i can dedicate uh, kind of a one session uh, particularly for uh, terrace farming okay so for those of you who are not farmers or farming at a large scale but are into apartment farming for personal use there will be a part of the course that will be dedicated to it a session or half a session to it so uh then we have uh, okay uh, i hope this has already been uh, addressed so uh, there's an anonymous attendee who want to know whether you are a practicing farmer and where do you practice and how long you've been doing it you did mention it but it seems that they have joined late so it would be really nice if you could respond to it oh. ravi ji since 2017 uh, i'm into this sector and right now i do farming with the farmers earlier i was managing my own farm for 3 years but then i have to spread this knowledge and i have to mean basically research on viksha ayurveda so i work with the farmers so one of the group of farmer is in uh, balia uttar pradesh like 200 acre farmers uh, are there and i am coming from rachi jharkhand so kind of uh, 50 acres of farm combining means the cumulative size of the farm of 10 farmers i am doing them with uh, an friction and earlier in 2017 i had half and i did uh, means manual digging all with myself means i was doing actually plugging and all just to uh, do the psychological barrier breaking means uh, i applied the technique of uh, means people would see then they would believe okay you cannot convince them so i had to at least validate for myself also so uh, people would say when people came to my farm why you you were leaving your ac uh, cubicle and and going for for the hard work okay but actually i i i need to validate at least uh, what i believe so i had a farm in bokaro jharkhand and right now uh, means i have farmers in 10 states of india they wow. are taking uh, helps of uh, uh, from krishi samita uh, two of my book that is in devanagari and later because uh, cow was very crucial for our techniques so then we also went for pashu ayurveda also the cow health care from ayurveda wow okay. yeah oh 
Uh, so there is a, a query from Keshava Puri ji. Has Riksha Ayurveda been implemented in India? Yes. So the Darjeeling tea, the organic tea, organic India sells it, right? Right. So so last twenty five years in Darjeeling, in Bengal, in many places, uh, the kind of a programs from university they they collaborated uh, with uh, farmers and basically uh, with the tea industry so organic tea is coming from the vrikshayveda technique okay okay uh, so uh, there's a question uh, from raji dorai swami ji will you be covering how we can use this knowledge to ma manage agriculture in countries other than india i guess yes but still i would want you to yeah, uh, so technically, uh, uh, what is the difference? The difference is the climate, difference is the cattle. Yes. Okay. So so uh, then I will advocate for Boss Taurus variety of cattle, like the Indian cow, because the intestine, the microbes that is coming from the cow dung of Indian cow, that is very much beneficial for the soil. So it's all about microbiology and climate management. Okay. And... Uh, the, uh, there is also one variable like uh, in Uttarakhand, in Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, my technique worked. Why? Because my technique is kind of a, for Kunap Jala is is kind of a uh, anaerobic fermentation chamber, and we are actually preparing herbal chemical out of these techniques. So chemical farming, but extracting chemical from herbs and at the end, it is not microbes. That means it can work in low temperature regions because in low temperature regions, microbes don't work. So Jivamrita will not work. Other natural fertilizer will not work, but herbal extract will work. Okay. So yes, it will work. Uh, and we can means discuss about the variables. What are the variables for other reasons? Okay, so Rushi Kumar Pandya ji uh, mentions, will this course be available in Hindi as well? So the thing is, Rushi ji, uh, generally our faculty use a mix of languages, but the media for, of instruction that we've put forth on the in, uh, enrollment page clearly is English because we have uh, participants from various parts of India as as well as globally. So it's it's a it's kind of a challenge for us. Like we had uh, actually offered few in Hindi only courses which hardly elicited any participation so perhaps uh, basis what your suggestion is because you've had you've given us a supplementary comment you mentioned that most of the people in this field don't know English and the subject will become more easy in Hindi then perhaps depending on the audience mix because on day one uh, you know we have Ravi Singh ji he would be getting acquainted with the cohort so if there is a need perhaps a mix of the both uh, languages could be used but uh, we have officially the medium of instruction uh, for this course is English but depending on the cohort we might take a call of making it bilingual but the deck uh, the presentation material everything will be in is will be in English so I answered it uh, on behalf of Ravi ji because this is kind of an operational call that we have to take. So I, I hope it addresses your query. Then we have uh, Mahesh ji has a very, very interesting uh, question. I'm tempted to say that, you know, complete this course and then see, but uh, still I would want your take on it. Mahesh ji asks if you'll be able to guide him uh, in building an ecosystem in his village. Uh, he says, I'll start with my 11 acres field. Eventually, we can be a part of a larger ecosystem, including carbon. So the vision is grand and I really wish them success. But I think this is a first step. So Ravi Ji, what do you have to say to that? Yeah, obviously, uh, uh, from bottom of my heart, I actually uh, want to see a farm that is fully based on Vriksha Veda. Wow. Okay, so, so uh, you can build like a center of excellence. Uh, kind of a farm that is based on Ayurvedic principles so that so that many researchers uh, could uh, uh, means can get help from your farm. So there is a uh, Ashwinji who has uh, asked us will there be any video in the course of how soil is prepared, uh, water, how is Banu preparation done or will it just be slides? I'm guessing from what you said there will be videos but I want you to confirm it. For for manure preparation, obviously there will be video, uh, but maybe 
not for the all parts of means doing farming. So specifically, uh, I'm not explaining the farming methodology, but the Vriksha Ayurveda part of the okay. farming methodology. Understood. Uh, then uh, Jia Arora ji, uh, I think this should have been addressed in your slide, but nevertheless, does Brihat Samita also mention about Vriksha Ayurveda and how do they connect? I think in your reference text, you had mentioned this. So, Ravi, did the you chapter, have... Yeah, the chapter 55, the chapter 55 of Brihat Samita, because Brihat Samita is about temple management, temple construction, and temple constructions need gardens, need flora and fauna. Okay. So that's why the chapter 55 covers Friksha Ayurveda. And uh, Raji Duraswami ji asks, what if there is no access to cow dung? I compost regularly. Any suggestions? Uh, people do, uh, means people apply many methodologies like uh, making biochar, uh, uh, using the forest soil, okay, using the excreta of any other domesticated means animal. So, so yes, there are alternatives. Uh, obviously, there are alternatives, and uh, in northeast, people use the concept of biochar and all. And then we have uh, Dhruv Parekchi, uh, who has two acres outside Mumbai with mangoes already in one acre. They are keen to use this practice. They're curious to know if Riksha Ayurveda will help them. I will, I will means uh, explain the methodology of making panchagavya. Uh, that that is enough for your mango farm. Just one biofertilizer. Wow, I think we are at five fifty eight, so uh, we might want to put a stop here. But thank you so very much for all your questions. Of highly engaged audience and I hope that uh, Ravi ji and I have been able to answer all the queries that you've had but in case there is something that comes to your mind uh, after the session is over please feel free to drop us an email at reach out at indica.courses I'll post this uh, email id in the chat box too and uh, if you have a question about today's webinar, if you have a question about this course, how to enroll, uh, or if you like some other course that is currently going on or about to ensue, please uh, drop a mail to us at reachout at indica.courses. Uh, I hope that the uh, overview webinar uh, of today, uh, which included the presentation that Raviji took us through and uh, the Q&A session that we had after it, have given you sort of a clear understanding of what to expect from this particular course. So I really, really encourage you to register for it and embark on a learning journey with us. As always, uh, we do offer scholarships or partial grants to students in need. So you can always uh, drop an email to us at reach out at indica.courses like we just posted in the chat box for all of you. One second. Yeah, I, I hope the email ID is visible. And uh, what will also happen after the session is over is that all of you who registered for this evening's webinar, irrespective of whether you could manage to join us in real time or not, all of you will receive a recording of this webinar. We essentially uh, upload all the webinar recordings on our Indic Academy's YouTube channel. So the link of the video will be emailed to all the registered participants. Uh, you can produce the recording again at your convenience. And if you have queries, drop us an email. And you can even share it with people who you think would benefit from it. So thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Raviji, for taking out your valuable time and really enriching us with these wonderful insights uh, and uh, showing us how... Uh, you know, you've contemporized this ancient uh, wisdom. So thank you once again, everyone. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in this Indica course and other future courses. Have a great weekend ahead. Namaste.